Hi everyone, my name is Gemma Stafford, professional chef, host of Bigger Boulder Baking and the proud brand ambassador for Good Cook. Recently on this channel, I have made a peach and blueberry crisp, s'more ice cream sandwiches, and a chocolate mousse that you can make in 10 minutes. Because it is back to school time, I'm gonna share with you a recipe that is great for kids of all ages. It is a giant pop tart made in the toaster oven. The recipe can be found on goodcook.com along with all of the information about the tools that I use. Okay, let's make our pastry in a large bowl. Add in flour, salt, and a little bit of icing sugar. And then just give these a quick stir together. We add a little bit of sugar into this pastry to make it a little bit sweet, but if you want it on the savory side, you can always leave it out. Now the most important ingredient when making pastry is butter. This is cold cubed butter. And I like to use salted because it just has that little bit of extra flavor. Now what we're going to do is just rub this butter in with our fingertips. You can also use a dough cutter to do this. All we're going to do is just rub it between your fingers until it resembles kind of coarse breadcrumbs. It just takes a few minutes. For those of you who have a food processor, you can also do this on a food processor really quickly. So this is what you're going for, some big and small lumps of butter. Now we're going to add in our wet ingredients into this. So here I have a little bit of water, nice and cold. And then into this, I'm going to add in some egg yolks. Now, if you do not eat eggs, don't worry. You can always just replace the egg yolks with water and it will still work really well. Then just give those a nice mix together. So now we're going to go and pour this into our dry ingredients. Now here is the secret when making bread doughs and pastry. Don't add in all of the liquid. Hold a little bit back because you might not need it all. And once it's in there, you can't take it out. However, if your dough is a little bit dry, you can always add a little bit more in. So all I'm going to do now is just pull the dough together with my hands. And all I want to do is for it to form into a nice big ball. When you are doing these kinds of things by hand, you don't want to overwork your dough. So just do it as swiftly as you can. So I just want to show you something. I didn't use all my liquid. There's around two tablespoons of liquid in there. So like I said, hold a little bit back and just see if you're going to need it. Okay, lovely. Now I have a rule about making doughs and pastries. You end up with one ball and a nice clean bowl. That means you did a good job. Now what you want to do is just cover this over, pop it into the fridge and let it chill for a minimum of an hour and it'll be much easier to roll out then. So for this recipe, you need a pan that'll fit in a toaster oven. So here I have a Good Cook Sweet Creations non-stick quarter sheet pan. This is nine inches by 13 inches, and it's an inch thick. This is the perfect size to fit in a toaster oven. As you can see, it has a channel surface for even baking, and it has a lifetime guarantee, so you know this is good quality. I have a few of these, and you can actually use them to make sheet cakes. They're really useful. So all I'm going to do now is just cover this with some butter, and then line it with some parchment paper. Now I'm just gonna set this over to the side and we're gonna roll out our pastry. So here I have my chilled dough on a floured surface. Now what you want to do is just cut this guy straight down the middle. So we have two pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom. I'm going to set the other piece back into the fridge so he can chill out while we're rolling the other dough. And then I'm just gonna take my rolling pin and you want to roll this out until it's a nice rectangle. Now we want it to be bigger than the tray, so you're talking around 11 inches by 14 inches. Now one great thing about this dough is that it freezes fantastically, and especially when you're heading into like busy seasons like the holidays, to have some pastry dough in your freezer ready to go to make a pie, it's a lifesaver. Okay, so that's looking good. We're going to very carefully lay this into the bottom of our tray. This is looking pretty awesome. And I want that little bit of extra pastry over the edges because we're going to crimp it and make it look really beautiful, just like a legit Pop-Tart. So here I have some jam. Now you can fill this with anything that you like, any flavor jam. You can put different fillings like chocolate, whatever you like in your Pop-Tart, you can put it in here. I like strawberry jam. I think it's actually one of the most popular flavors of Pop-Tart. So I'm going to fill this up with that. Then with the spatula, just spread it out all the way to the edges. As you can see, this will give you a nice thick layer of jam. So now what we want to do is just set this guy over to the side and then we're going to roll out our second piece of pastry. So now with this guy, roll it out to roughly the same and maybe a little bit smaller. Nice big rectangle again. So this recipe can actually be made into individual pop tarts. You don't have to make a big one. So you can make maybe four or five out of this recipe. So growing up in Ireland, when my mum would make a tart, any scraps of pastry she had left over, she used to let us fill with jam, and then she would bake them off in the oven for us. And we just thought they were absolute heaven. 
very carefully just pick it up and then gingerly lay it over the top of your pop tart lovely and then just with your hands very gently just press it into place just to make sure that it's all covered so with a knife or even a pair of scissors go around the edge and just tidy up the pastry and get it to a nice clean rectangle as best you can and save any of those scraps to the end just in case we need them so then with a fork all you have to do is just go around the edges and just gently crimp them and what this will do is it will seal the two layers of pastry together so your jam doesn't flow out and it will give you a lovely finished look at the end and then with the same fork just go ahead and poke a few holes in the top and this will just let out the steam while it's baking fantastic if you want to go around with a knife again and just tidy up your edges one more time that's totally good this is a killer looking pop tart i can't wait to bake it off just before it goes into the oven i'm going to brush it with some egg wash and look what i have here remember that little bit of liquid i had left over from my egg earlier i already have egg wash this is why i hang on to it to the very end then just go ahead and just brush it over if you're an avid baker get yourself a silicone brush so you won't be picking out hairs out of your baked goods okay lovely now our pop tart is ready for the toaster oven so bake your pop tart off at 375 degrees fahrenheit or 190 degrees celsius for roughly 25 to 35 minutes or until lovely golden brown now this can also be done in a regular oven for the same amount of time and at the same temperature so while our pop tart is in the oven we're going to make our icing now this could not be simpler here i have a nice big bowl of powdered sugar and i sifted it to remove any lumps so I'm just gonna add in a tiny bit of milk and then with a whisk, I'm just gonna mix it together. Now you want to use a bit of elbow grease here and make sure that there's no lumps. It only takes a tiny bit of liquid to get the consistency that you want. And if you want it a little bit thicker, maybe it went too runny, add in a little bit more powdered sugar and vice versa. Okay, perfect. This is the exact texture and consistency I want for my icing. This is gonna spread really well on top of the Pop-Tart. Now I'm going to set this aside because I heard my timer go off, so I'm just going to check in the oven. Our Pop-Tart looks fantastic. It is a beautiful golden brown and it's nice and sealed on top. None of the jam snuck out, which I'm very happy about because that can happen. It looks really good. I'm super happy with this. So right now I'm going to take the icing that I made. I'm just going to pour it on top and then with my spatula, just spread it out all the way to the edges. I think one of the best parts about the Pop-Tart is actually the frosting. Actually, no, I take that back. Frosting and then sprinkles and then pastry and then filling. Perfect. Here I have some sprinkles that look just like the ones that you see on a strawberry Pop-Tart. Have to have those. So very generously sprinkle those on top. Look at that. Talk about taste in the rainbow. They're gorgeous. Beautiful color. Okay, lovely. Now what you want to do is because this is still warm and the jam is kind of runny on the inside, you want to set this aside, I would say for half an hour, an hour, let it cool down completely and then you can cut it. It is cooled down so I'm excited to be able to cut this. Go ahead and cut it into a few pieces because it's really thick and it will feed a lot of people. So here's the thing. What could be bad about jam wrapped in pastry? It's buttery, it's flaky, and then the inside is sweet and fruity. Oh my gosh, absolute heaven. There's something very nostalgic about this treat. Head over to goodcook.com right now and you'll be able to get the recipe and all the information about the good cook tools that I use. And I'll see you back here really soon.